Hey guys, Jen Graves here doing um, my last video, um, trying to get around to getting everything done. Um, so uh, I finally got some of my other videos done and I finally got to being able to do my uh, day 30 of the Spartan Challenge video. Um, so I was at 60... Uh, 66. So this is 67, 68, 69, 70, 71. Um, so we're going to start with the bottom ones first. And I can't remember if I mixed these up or not. So that's the only bad thing. I don't think I did. I think this is the right order. So, um, you know, I read the other ones up there on the top right there. Right there. Birth of Kitaro and Kitaro meets... Nura Ri, Ri Yong, or whatever. So this one is Kitaro and Strange Adventures. Um, this one was pretty good, guys. I liked the uh, story and how it went with this one. Um, we also had Kitaro and the Great Tanuki Wars. I actually think that's the third one right there. Um, these ones are a lot better. You kind of got to look at it from this angle. Um, if I can get it to do it, maybe from the top will be better. You see right there on the very end, there, there's kind of a bent page in there right there. But you see kind of down here at the very end where my finger is, where there's like three black lines right there. Let's see if I can get it to straighten up for you. Like right there, there's like three black lines. Those are actually where the chapters are. Um, so this whole first part was the Tanuki War, which was fantastic. Um, I really loved how um, they did part of the series. The first ones I was a little skeptical about because of how um, it was like nine stories like a regular manga is. Um, but then these ones were fantastic. This one... And, um, Kitaro and the Vampire Slayer. Um, both of these were fantastic because the Vampire Slayer and the Great Tanuki War took up the majority of the book. So I really liked it where you got a big story in it and then you had little stories that, um, came across, uh, later on. And the ones that they did for these, the cover ones actually were the big stories that were in them. The other ones, not so much um, because of the breakdown and whatnot. Um, you know, just like the Kitaro meets the um, Nera Rion. Ri, Rion. Um, that one, I really couldn't tell you that the chapter was that big. But I mean, like I said with these, you know, you can tell those few little black lines. That's where the uh, chapter break is um, because it's kind of like... See if I can do it off of the biography. Kind of like that. It's a whole black page, so you can kind of tell where they are. Um, and then this one was kind of the same way. This one had a few more black lines in it at the end. I think this one had one more story in it. But this one was really good. I liked those huge stories being in it um, with the other ones. Um, I don't know if these were in a newspaper or anything, but they could have been. So... Um, another one I lie, uh, I read was to, uh, Juji Ito Dissolving Classroom. Um, I really have to break away from the group with this one, guys. I know a lot of people have gotten this one and talked about it. Um, and I'm sad to say this one is actually not all that great to me. Um, I, I didn't really like it. I mean, it was fun that it had the story behind it. It was fun that it was kind of a, a, a dark evil one, I guess. It was a darker manga, um, you know, but it just, it wasn't fun to me. Um, you know, it wasn't fun to read, um, anything else like that, you know, like Higurashi When They Cry is another dark one, or, um, you know, like Death Note, stuff like that, where they have dark elements. This one was even darker than those, um, but I just, I didn't like it um, at all. So, uh, I couldn't really, 
I can talk about it, but I couldn't really tell you what, um, what I really liked out of it. I, I can't really tell you that. So this one just is kind of a bust for me, guys. Um, and I know a lot of people have gotten this one and a lot of people have liked it, but it just, I didn't like it. So, um, I do have to do a review on it later, but, um, like I said, I don't, I don't think I can claim it or anything, you know, um, it didn't really, it was just kind of like the gore, I guess, you know, how people like scary movies, but they can't handle the gore. Um, I guess this was kind of that, it kind of had that weird Japanese gore to it. Um, if you've ever seen like a Japanese movie, how some of the craziness happens in it. Um, that's kind of how this one was and I, I just didn't like it. So anyway, um, I, f I got that one done though. So, um, I do have another Juji Ito book coming out later on. It's a, like a retelling of Frankenstein. And I hope that Juji Ito can reclaim himself off of that one because like I said, Dissolving Glassroom, I didn't like. And it could have just been the dissolving part. Um, maybe a Frankenstein one, something that I already know, um, will be a lot better. Um, so fingers crossed, um, because I don't know, um, you know, I, I just, I didn't like it. So, um, anyway, and then we have this one. Um, this was my last one, guys. I really love this one. It is kind of dungeon crawlery. But it's, um, this one sticks more for, like, uh, Yatsuba and Sweetness and Lightning and some of the other ones where it's, um, about, like, a little kid, um, you know, except this one took place where it was kind of, like, set in the same setting as Dungeon Crawlers, um, but they didn't really do too much Dungeon Crawler stuff in it. Um, it's more about, like, an adventurer raising... Um, this demon child and not knowing how to do it because he's 18 and, um, you know, he's raising her like a little girl, but, you know, um, we're not exactly sure if that's who claims her as his daughter or not. So this was a very good one. I would say, um, highly recommend it. It did have that, um, really feel good. Um, enjoyment in it. I like how some of the characters took to the uh, little girl and whatnot and how she's picking up languages and stuff fast. Well, not languages, but uh, their language. You know, she, I guess, speaks um, demon. And um, the guy said, well, demon language is kind of the language of like spellcasters. Um, it takes root in it or something. And so he can kind of commun with, communicate with her. And he got her a lot of picture books, and now she just knows it. So, um, really good one. I, I am totally happy to add this one to um, my favorite shelf. So, hopefully I'll be able to do that and, um, you know, figure out where I'm going to store some of these other ones at. But, anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this video. I will catch y'all later on. Jen Graves, signing out. Bye.